So for the past two weeks, we've taken a look at particular positions of need for the Green Bay Packers and all the prospects available in the upcoming draft. Two weeks ago, we took a look at cornerback options, and last week, we took a look at safety options. Two positions of need for the Green Bay Packers. So in today's video, we're going to continue that series, and we're going to look at all linebacker options for the Green Bay Packers in this upcoming draft. We're going to look at each individual prospect in terms of the threshold that the Packers may be looking at in order to draft them. We know the Packers constantly have these particular thresholds at certain positions. Most of the time, it has to do with them being a great athlete or not. So we're going to look at the past 10 years of drafting at inside linebacker for the Packers and how all the upcoming prospects match to that. Now, let me start off by saying that linebacker, in my opinion, is pretty weak in this upcoming draft class. Pun intended, there's a lot of weak side linebackers available. Not too many strong side linebackers, not too many true Mike linebackers. So a lot of them are weak side linebackers, which a lot of you might be already saying, hey, well, we already have one of those. We have Quay Walker. He's going to be our weak side linebacker. Move him around a lot. Pressure the quarterback, sideline to sideline, cover running backs, cover tight ends, right? You want your your coverage guy there, your athletic guy that can also rush the passer. But I do believe Quay Walker can play the mic. I, I really do. I think Isaiah McDuffie likely will be our strong side backer going into the season. Uh, but I think he can kind of play at any one of those spots if we really need him to. You know, he's been in the league for a while now. Uh, so he has the experience. I think he could play any one of those spots. Um, so the Packers very well could go and draft a weak side linebacker if the value is there at the spot they're picking at. There's a lot of um, decent weak side linebackers available in this draft class uh, but like I said not too many Mike's not too many Sam's all right so first let's take a look at the last 10 years of drafted linebackers by the Green Bay Packers going over their height and weight and their RAS these are the main things that you want to take a look at in terms of what the Packers like to draft. So we'll start in 2022, obviously, with Quay Walker. He's 6'4", 241 pounds, a 9.63 RAS. The same year, they drafted Tariq Carpenter um, as a linebacker. I didn't list him as a safety in my safety video because they drafted him to be a linebacker. So he's ran as a linebacker here. Uh, 6'3", 230 pounds, 8.92 RAS. Then in 2021, they drafted Isaiah McDuffie. A little bit of an outlier here, 6'1", 226. Seven, so a little shorter and lighter and a lower RAS of 7.32. Then we have Kamal Martin in 2020. Man, what could have been of Kamal Martin? That was, uh, everyone was hype about him, myself included, and it just turned into nothing. 6'3", 240, didn't have a recorded RAS. Then we have Ty Summers, 6'1", 241, uh, 9.71 RAS. Still shocks me that Ty Summers had that high of an RAS, honestly. Oren Burke, 6'3", 233, another safety slash inside linebacker hybrid. I feel like they they really do like drafting these kind of guys, and there is one of them in this draft class that the Packers could be eyeing. Um, Oren Burke, 6'3", 233, 9.72 RAS. Blake Martinez, another outlier here, 6'2", 237. Height and weight's fine, but RAS, uh, the lowest one they've drafted in, in the last 10 years, 6.42. Then we have Jake Ryan, 6'2", 240, 8.54. This is another one that shocks me that he had this high of an RAS. Then all the way back to 2014, we have Carl Bradford. They didn't really know what position he was, but I'm going to list him as an inside linebacker because that's, I believe, what he was coming out of Arizona State. 6'1", 250, so the heaviest linebacker on this list, but it was also 10 years ago where linebackers were just traditionally um, they weighed more, and he had a 7.02 RAS. So if you average all of those out, the average height and weight 6'2", 238 pounds, and the average RAS 8.41. So again, surprise, surprise, like most every other position, the Packers like their athletes at inside linebacker. There's not too many height and weight restrictions. I mean, they've drafted linebackers from 6'1 to 6'4, and they've drafted linebackers from 227 pounds to 250 pounds. So there's not much um, strictness there. But we know the Packers like their athletes, so 8.41 RAS average there at inside linebacker the last 10 years. All right, so now let's dive down into the list. I'm going to bring the first five up on the board. And after these first five, honestly, in my opinion, there's a pretty big drop off. And you could even say there's a pretty big drop off after the first three or four. So let's start off by going over what this list entails, height and weight 
age position fit. So this is based off of my opinion, based off of the scouting reports that I looked up, if they could be a weak side linebacker, a Mike, or a Sam, right? Then we have run defense grade in 2023, coverage grade in 2023, missed tackle percentage in 2023, their current RAS, if they fit the Packers threshold, and their projected round. So let's, of course, start with Edron Cooper. He's my inside linebacker one. Some people have Peyton Wilson over him. I have Edger and Cooper. I think he has more potential than Peyton Wilson, less injury history, and is younger. As we see here, 22 years old, 6'2", 230 pounds. I think he's a weak side linebacker in the NFL level. Um, I did a whole video on him, and it kind of just showcases similarities to Quay Walker, which, you know, if the Packers were to draft Cooper, I'm okay with having two of those guys on your defense. You know, having two guys that can fly around sideline to sideline, read and react, um, cover running backs, cover tight ends, it's not a bad thing. Now, it depends what type of draft capital you spend on that. Uh, but I would love to pair Edgerton Cooper with Quay Walker. I know some people are against it, but I would love to see it. Run defense grade 87.6 last year, coverage grade 85.5, missed tackle rate of 12.8%, and a 9.13 RAS. So I think by all accounts, Edgerton Cooper 100% fits that Packers threshold. He's projected in the first to second round. I'd say second round, right around where the Packers pick between 41 and 58. Um, I'd be a little surprised if he jumps into the first round, but he very well could. Then we have Peyton Wilson next on this list from NC State, 6'4", 233 pounds. So one of the taller linebackers um, in this draft class, but he is also 24 years old and has a lot of injury history. So who knows if the Packers would shy away from this. I know they wouldn't be selecting him in the first round because he's 24 years old and the Packers tend to go for 21 or 22 years old on all their first round picks outside of Devontae Wyatt, which was a luxury pick because they had two of them. I also see Peyton Wilson as a weak side linebacker but I think he could kind of play any spot, uh, maybe even the mic, uh, but I have him listed here as weak side. He has an 83.7 run defense grade, 90.4 coverage grade, and a very low missed tackle rate, 4.7% and a 9.89 RAS. So yes, I think he fits the Packers threshold, uh, but I would definitely see him as a second rounder as well with Edrin Cooper. If there were to be a linebacker to sneak into the first round, I think it's going to be Cooper. I don't think it's going to be Peyton Wilson due to the age and injury history, but say if he's there at say 58 for the Green Bay Packers and they've yet to draft a linebacker, you know, I'd be fine with that pick. Then we have Junior Colson. He's the first kind of like different linebacker uh, of the bunch. From Michigan, 6'2", 238 pounds, 21 years old. I'm really intrigued by Junior Colson, also because I think he fits into strong side linebacker, which, yes, Isaiah McDuffie could play there, but I think Junior Colson could be better there. I think he would be a perfect strong side linebacker fit for this new 4-3 defense. He had an 80.0 run defense grade last year, 83.4 coverage grade, also a very low missed tackle rate. He's a very secure tackler, 4.7% uh, percent there. He did not test, so no RAS there, but I think he has enough athleticism, so I think he is a Packers threshold fit. I think he goes in the second round, maybe slides to the early third, but if he's there at pick 58 and the Packers have yet to get a linebacker and Cooper and Wilson are off the board, I'm all on board for Junior Colson there. Next, we have Jeremiah Trotter Jr., of course, son of NFL great Jeremiah Trotter from Clemson, one of the most undersized linebackers, but obviously with football being in his lineage and, you know, he played well at Clemson, he will be drafted uh, pretty highly. I think he's one of the best football IQ linebackers in this class. 21 years old, and that's why I have him listed as my first Mike linebacker. I think he has the IQ for it, the athleticism, the run-stopping ability. He's all around just a great linebacker, so I think he'll be a good Mike. 80.4 run defense grade, 82 coverage grade, uh, a bit of a missed tackle issue uh, due to his you know shorter frame. Sometimes arm tackles, you can't reach out far enough. 16.3% missed tackle rate, definitely got to get that cleaned up. No RAS, so I have him as a maybe because we really don't know his athleticism as of right now. Um, I don't necessarily know the Packers would be drafting a six foot 228 pound linebacker they very well could he's 21 years old son of Jeremiah Trotter right they very well could but I really think they'd eye someone like Junior Colson or even the next guy on the list over someone like Jeremiah Trotter even though I do think Trotter will be a good linebacker in the NFL next on the list is Cedric Gray out of North Carolina I know a lot of people like this linebacker um, a lot of people think he's going to be a draft steal 
6'1", 234 pounds, also 21 years old, and I see him as a weak side linebacker, very similar to the Edrin Cooper, to Quay Walker, right? So if the Packers don't get a linebacker early and say you want to get one in the middle rounds that also is like Quay Walker and want to get two of those guys together, uh, I think Cedric Gray is a good option. Run defense grade 62.7, coverage grade 70.0, also a pretty high missed tackle rate, though, a 14.6%, but does have an RAS of over a 7, a 7 point two six so I do have him as a Packers fit although he's not the the greatest athlete and it's not an eight or a nine the Packers have shown in the past that they have drafted linebackers with a seven RAS and I think he fits every other you know threshold for the Packers before we move on to the next list of linebackers available in the upcoming draft wanted to give a big shout out to sleeper for sponsoring today's video and right now on sleeper with the link down in the description you can get a first time deposit match up to $500. So if you were to deposit $200, then you'll have $400 to play with on Sleeper. On Sleeper, you can choose higher or lower on any given stat on a plethora of different players and sports. Choose between two to eight players and win up to 100 times your money. Sleeper is a very clean app to use, very easy to use. You can make picks within 30 seconds. And I'm also doing a giveaway via Sleeper, and that is this signed Lucas Van Ness Packers jersey here, home jersey. I'm giving this away in April. I might add another item into the giveaway, so make sure to get in on this giveaway, and it's very simple. You go down in the description, download Sleeper, use code BASS, B-A-S, to make a first-time deposit, get that deposit matched, and also be entered in this giveaway. Like I said, this giveaway runs through the end of April, so I'll announce the winner on May 1st. Again, thank you to Sleeper for sponsoring today's video. All right, so now let's move on to our next group of linebackers in this upcoming draft. Uh, here we have Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State, 6'2", 233 pounds, 23 years old. He's more of that traditional linebacker. I have him as a strong side linebacker, just that run-stuffing type of linebacker. So if the Packers, like I said, want a strong side guy and they miss out on Junior Colson. I think Tommy Eichenberg's the next guy in terms of a strong side backer. He had a 66.6 uh, run defense grade, 52.7 coverage grade. Not the greatest in coverage, but is a good run stuffer. 8.7% missed tackle rate and a 7.87 RIS. I have him as a maybe for the Green Bay Packers. Then we have Maurice Leofau from Notre Dame, a guy I've uh, mocked to the Green Bay Packers a couple times, and I'll probably stop doing that after doing this video, kind of realizing that he, he doesn't look like a, a Packers linebacker in my opinion. 6'2", 234 pounds, 23 years old, probably a weak side linebacker at the NFL level, 66.5 run defense, 84.1 coverage grade, a very, very, very poor missed tackle rate of 18.9%. Uh, don't need more missed tackles on that Green Bay defense for sure, and a very low RAS, 5.63. Uh, the Packers have never drafted a linebacker under a 6.4 and that was Blake Martinez in 2016, so I highly doubt they'd go and draft a Maurice Leofau, especially if it's in the fourth or fifth round, but I've been shocked before by the Packers. Next, we have someone that I think the Packers will be eyeing, and that is James Williams out of Miami. Now, he played safety at Miami, and he was also in my safety video, but when making this, I was like, you know what? Let me include him into the linebacker because that's the way the NFL is going. You have these bigger size safeties at the college level that transition into linebacker in the NFL. We saw it with Tariq Carpenter for the Packers, Oren Burks even. Uh, so I, I think the Packers like those kind of guys, the tweeners that they call them, right? 6'4", 231 pounds, so kind of built exactly like every other guy on this list, right? 21 years old. I have him listed as various because I don't really know where you'd fit him at this point. Probably weak side because he has that safety trait, like coverage type of linebacker, right? He's definitely going to be a, a coverage linebacker. 64.8 run defense grade, 85.6 coverage grade. Now, keep in mind, this is as a safety, so it's a little bit different, and a 14.8% missed tackle rate, and his RAS is 7.43, and I ran his RAS as an inside linebacker and not a safety, so I do have him as a Packers fit just because they've drafted guys just like him before. Then we have another linebacker out of Notre Dame, and that is J.D. Bertrand, a 6'1", 235 pounds, 23 years old. I see him as a Mike linebacker at the NFL level, 77.5 run defense grade, 70.5 coverage grade, a little bit of a high missed tackle rate, 15.5%. 
No RAS, but I still have him as a Packers fit due to height and weight, due to him being a Mike that the Packers kind of need if you don't consider Quay Walker a Mike. Um, and he's good against the run, good against the pass. Then we have Curtis Jacobs from Penn State. He's 6'1", 241 pounds, 22 years old. I project him as a weak side linebacker at the NFL level. Very poor run defense grade, 55.8. Coverage grade, 64.9. 12.5 missed tackle rate, but a good athlete, 8.47. For that reason, I have him as a Packers fit. Fit. Then we have Trevin Wallace, and I've talked about him in many videos, and I still don't know where to rank him. I mean, there's so many people saying he's a third round pick night and day, and there's so many people saying he's a sixth to seventh round pick or even an undrafted free agent. I really am confused on Trevin Wallace, and the Packers have met with him, so it just makes it even more confusing. 6'1", 237 pounds, 21 years old. I see him as a strong side linebacker. Uh, his grades last year were not good. 61.4 run defense, 58.6 coverage, but a, a lower uh, missed tackle rate of 11.5, but he he is a great athlete, 9.33. So this is why I do have him on the Packers board. He's an athlete. They met with him. He's kind of like fits into a strong side type of linebacker. So I, I do think he'll be a, a Packers on the Packers draft board. And I have him as fifth the sixth round. I really don't know. Then we have Steel Chambers out of Ohio State, six foot. 226 very very undersized for a linebacker like 15 years ago if we were going through this list you'd be like what is going on right like these guys are built like old safeties it's crazy how much the nfl has transitioned right 23 years old i have him listed as a mic i don't really know where to put him uh one of my least favorite linebackers coming out this class if i'm being honest run defense 55.5 coverage grade Pretty good, though, 77.4 and a low missed tackle rate, 9.7%. But, man, he is a, he is not an athlete, 4.64. So I have him as a no for the Green Bay Packers. Then we have Tyron Hopper from Missouri, another linebacker that the Packers have met with. He's 6'2", 231, 22 years old. I have him projected as a weak side linebacker at the NFL level. 60.9 run defense grade, man, a coverage grade of a 39.6. That is god-awful. And the highest missed tackle rate. On this entire list, a 22.7%. He misses one every five tackle attempts over that. that. That is absolutely insane for a linebacker. That's not good at all. I'm hoping last year was just a very bad year for Tyron Hopper. The Packers met with him. Uh, you know, he's probably a seventh round undrafted guy, special teamer, maybe 7.43. So I have him listed as maybe just because the Packers met with him. Then we have Jalen Ford from Texas, 6'2", 240 pounds. So getting a little bit heavier on the heavier side in terms of this day and age linebackers, which I'm all for, right? In terms of uh, a Mike linebacker, which is what I have him listed as 22 years old, 80.2 against the run, not great in coverage, 50 grade there, 12.7 missed tackle rate and an 8.3 RAS, so I do have him as a Packers fit. Then we have Jordan McGee from Temple, 6'1", 228. Couldn't find an age on him. Um, I have him listed as a Mike, 79.1 run defense grade, 79.8 pass coverage grade, 14.9% missed tackle rate, and a 9.6 RAS, which I believe is the second highest RAS to only Peyton Wilson on this entire list, so very, very good athlete, and I think could be like a seventh round guy that the Packers maybe target as like the second linebacker they draft, so I do have him as a fit. Then we have Edith Stefan Ulof uh, let me know if I'm butchering the name, trying my best with that one from Washington, six foot, 236 pounds, 24 years old. I have him listed as a strong side linebacker, even though he was much better in coverage last year than run defense. I just feel like his, his body type, his athleticism, all that just, and the way he plays and his IQ kind of has him as a strong side backer, 64.7 run defense grade, 90.4 in coverage, 11.4 missed tackle. So actually he's a 9.67. So Jordan McGee isn't the second highest. He's actually the third. And I also have him as a fit due to him being an athlete and kind of fitting that size threshold, even though he's at six foot and the Packers have never drafted a, a linebacker under, under six one. But I think he, you know, as a seventh round undrafted guy, the Packers would bring him in. Then we have Michael Barrett as the last guy on the list out of Michigan. 5'11", 233, like, that's insane. 5'11", as a linebacker, right, is insane. 24 years old, I have him listed as a weak side backer. I feel like he'd have to at that size. 74.3 run defense, 72 coverage grade, 11.5% missed tackle percentage, and the lowest RAS on the list, 3.83, oh man. So, 
no as a fit for the Green Bay Packers. And again, I have him as a seventh to undrafted free agent. So those are all the notable inside linebackers in the upcoming 2024 draft class. Like I said, this is a pretty weak linebacker class. I was shocked the Packers didn't go out and try to sign a free agent linebacker. Not that there was many great ones, but looking at this class and looking at the Packers roster of Quay Walker, McDuffie, Eric Wilson, and Christian Welch, that's pretty much it. Switching to a 4-3 that uses more off-ball linebackers. I kind of expect them to go sign a free agent. But in terms of this draft, they'll probably draft one or two linebackers. Um, probably a weak side guy. Probably a strong side guy or a Mike. I, I think they'll draft two guys. Um, I have some favorites on this list, such as Edron Cooper, Junior Colson, um, some other guys down the list as well. But let me know your favorite down in the comments below. Which linebacker do you want the Packers to draft this upcoming draft? But I appreciate you guys coming by to the video as as always, if you could, please leave a like down below. It supports the channel a ton, but I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, Go Pack Go!